Hi folks, Rodney back again with Rodney's Northwest Riding Reviews. Today, I'm going to do a walk around video on this 1794 edition Tundra Crew Max iForce Max. The 1794 edition only comes one way, so it's going to have the chrome grille, um, basically has almost every feature that you can put on it, uh, with the exception of the adaptive suspension and then the rear low, low, leveling, low leveling suspension. Uh, so I'm going to kind of walk through some of the features here, kind of point out some of the highlights of the truck, and then show you some features that you typically don't see on some of the other models. Now, the 1794 edition is the hardest, hardest Tundra to come by. Uh, so if you guys have been looking for one, this one does happen to be available. Uh, it does have the six and a half foot bed, as you'll be able to see there. This one does have the adaptive suspension and the rear low leveling suspension. Now this one, because it does not have the TRD off-road package, your fender flares are going to be actually silver or gray as they might be, uh, instead of the, the black cladding that you typically will have on the TRD off-road. Uh, these are the standard 1794 wheels. You see the 1794 badging and then also your um, body side molding there on the, the doors too. Got your iForce Max badging there. Chrome mirror caps are going to be standard. The panorama view monitor is going to be standard on this truck. Now you got your high definition LED fog lights there. You've got parking sensors both front and rear. You got the high definition LED headlights. Got the little blue insignia in the logo itself. And that's basically uh, identifies it as a hybrid model. You will have your sequential turn signals and then you also have the LED uh, running lights. This is a beautiful truck. Now if you're looking for a truck with some chrome on it, obviously the 1794 or the capstone are going to be the trucks that you want to get. I'll open the doors here in a moment, but it does have the automatic running boards on this one. You got your chrome on the, the bumper there. Chrome handle here, you also see that on the capstone and the limited model. The platinum model will be colored black. You got your four pin and seven pin wiring harness. You got your LED bed lights in here. Got your 110 outlet for the bed there, or in the bed rather. On the panorama view monitor, you have six cameras. So on the back of the cab there, you've got two cameras. So one faces down into the bed, the other one faces back. So if you had a trailer back there, it'd be easy for you to see that uh, things are secured properly. You do have the button there to lower the tailgate. You notice that when you lower the tailgates or when you open the button there, <laughs> I should say open the tailgate with the button, uh, you notice that you've got your automatic step steps out there and that actually really makes it handy to get in and out of the, the bed. Now these beds are spring activated and the cyst on them makes them really easy to open and close. You see that retract. Headlight here so when you're backing up to a trailer at nighttime it makes it easy to see where you're at and of course you got your backup camera there. Now you have the sequential turn signals here, so they will go side to side as your turn signals are on. Now I did get a chance to drive this one. I didn't drive it very far, but drove it, drove it a little ways. And it has multiple settings, and I'll show you that here in a moment. But one of the nice things is that you have with the adaptive suspension, you can set it on comfort, and it actually is quite a bit smoother than what the normal Tundra would ride. And then you also have a Sport and a Sport Plus that firms up the suspension. So if you're going through corners and whatnot, it's going to make it, uh, make it corner a little better with that firmer suspension. All right, inside the truck, got the retractable running boards. And you can turn those on or off. I know sometimes uh, some of the people don't care for running boards. Now, obviously, if you have kids or or family that needs them to get in and out of the back. That makes it awesome. Uh, but sometimes people don't like them because when you step out, sometimes they have a tendency to kind of scrape you on the back of the leg. And if, uh, you know, somebody was wearing a dress or somebody's wearing slacks, you could get mud or dirt on the back of your slacks or dress. 
You do have the wood grain trim uh, of the 1794 edition. Uh, you've got the power folding mirrors, and you can set that up in either an auto setting or you can manually do it there how you want it. Uh, but like I said, wood grain trim. Now, the 1794 edition is known for the saddle type interior. And so this is what the interior looks like. You can see the two-tone trim there. Now you got 10-way power seat, you got lumbar support, you also have a knee bolster. I don't know if you guys can see that coming up and down there. So it just gives you additional knee support, makes it nice for a long trip. You got your button here for the power folding mirrors. You do have heated steering wheel. You got your 110 outlet button in the back. Um, this is for your dome lights on the back of the cab. Uh, auto dimming headlamps, those are part of the safety features. All the hybrid models will have the, the gas release. You got a button here, so it's electronic release on the gas cap. Um, you get your trip meter there. Now the 1794 is going to have a electronic tilt and telescopic steering wheel. Uh, it's going to have to be running before it's going to move there. And then you also have your parking sensors back there that if you're backing up it detects an object and prevents you from backing up into that object. The 1794 does have its own specialized floor mats. You got the 1794 logo in the the mats themselves, uh, but they're like a carpeted, and then you got a little 1794 badging there, or rivets. Uh, you do have heated and cooled seats for the back. Makes it nice. And then of course you got your 110 outlet with your uh, additional power points there. All of the crew max are gonna have the additional uh, air vents in the back. And then of course, with all the crew max, all of the rear windows will all go all the way down. You got your vent shades back here, more wood grain trim. These will all come standard with the JBL audio system. And of course you see your amplifier down there. You do have a subwoofer in the back back there. and we'll stop in just a moment. <clears throat> all right, so this is your digital cluster and they're all gonna come standard with the digital dash on all the 1794 editions. Um, but in here, you have the ability to customize this side of the screen. And then over here on the left-hand side is gonna be your standard screens that you will see on all of the Tundras. Um, now, this one has 10 miles on it, so don't be alarmed by the, the average fuel economy that you see there because typically people have been sitting in the vehicle and it's just been idling as they kind of been checking it out, so they haven't driven it much. A um, Couple things I wanted to show you. So here you have your drive mode. So let me show you on the dash as it changes. So you can see right below the, the time that it's in the comfort mode. And like I said, it does ride smoother than the standard uh, tundra wood and that's part of the adaptive suspension and then you got normal setting you got sports and then sport plus and then custom now i haven't been able to mess with it that much so i'm not sure what custom i don't know if that gives you the ability to uh, adjust it the way you want it which that's my assumption but i haven't played with it and so i don't know that for certain And it just kind of gives you a, a diagram there, what's going on with the, <clears throat> excuse me. It gives you a diagram on what's going on. So you see the suspension changes colors as you're in the Sport Plus. Okay, uh, you have a little diagram or a little icon here that's letting you know uh, where you're at in the rear low leveling suspension. So over here, you have the ability to manually adjust it or you have it, you can set it in the auto setting. So on manual adjustment, you have the ability to lower it lower than the regular lo load height. And this would be for the bed back there. So let's say for instance, you're loading a bunch of plywood or wood or what have you in the back and you wanna lower it just a little bit, just to make things a little bit easier. You can actually lower it one inch. Uh, but then you can also, if you're off-roading, um, you have the ability to manually raise it one inch too for a little more ground clearance. 
here you got your rear backup assist and so what that does is once you hook a trailer on once you set it up it's going to ask you to turn directions or turn left turn right uh, and basically what it's doing is it's measuring the trailer and then when you get ready it gives you the ability to go on ahead and set it up where it will help you back up in a straight line so in that all you do is you just you have your foot on the brake and pedal and then it actually does the steering for you and like i said it will back up in a straight line uh, you do have your panorama view monitor so you have the ability to go in here and change the color uh, but you can do a 360 degree view and that kind of gives you a great idea of where you're at as far as in a parking space or what surroundings are around you you can do a lower setting and these are using the four cameras right now. So one in the front, one underneath both of the side view mirrors, and then of course one on the tailgate. Now, when you put it in reverse, you're gonna see not only your backup camera, you've also got your parallel view here, and it makes it nice. So when you're pulling into a parking space, you can see number one, how close you are to an object. Uh, if you're pulling up to a curb or if you're pulling into the garage, uh, but then also if you're, you're parking in lines or parking in a space, you can see the lines on both sides of the vehicle too. Now when you hit this auto button right here, so now anytime you, you take off and you go into drive, it, this camera will come on up to 10 miles per hour. Once you exceed 10 miles per hour, that camera shuts off. But it makes it nice because when you're pulling into a parking space, you can see how close you are to the vehicles on the sides or how close you are to the curb as you pull up. Um, so I, I love that feature because, you know, obviously in the truck, this windshield is a little bit shorter. Uh, and being in the truck, it's not as easy to see your surroundings. And so this definitely makes a huge benefit. Climate control, you got heated and cooled seats. Um, standard climate control settings here front defrost you do have rear defrost and heated mirrors um, you can actually because this is a hybrid model you can shut the vents off to the back seat and obviously that saves a little bit of electricity um, i don't know that this may make a huge difference uh, but they have it in other hybrid models as well come standard with a panel sunroof um, you got a digital rear view mirror so the benefit of that is that if you have people sitting in the back or you have, let's say, you have luggage or whatnot in the back seat and you don't have the ability to see out the back window, you can use the camera that's on the back of the cab and that's where that digital rear view mirror comes in. You got your home link here. Uh, this is the settings for that digital camera itself. And then you also have your auto dimming rear view mirror. I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, kind of talked about some of the things that are unique about the vehicle. Uh, you know, you do have the wood grain trim over here. You got the 1794 edition. Kind of looks like it's been uh, stamped into the, the wood grain there. Uh, but it is definitely a beautiful truck. Appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the video. If you have any questions, feel free to go in and send them our way. Uh, if you have one that's on order uh, or you put a deposit on one waiting for the vehicle to come in, go on ahead and send me a VIN number. I'd be more than happy to give you a, a latest status update on it. Uh, but make sure you're sending me the correct VIN. If it has a letter in the last five digits of the VIN, that's going to be a temporary VIN. And the problem is if you send me that temporary VIN and the vehicle's already been built and it's in transit, I won't be able to pull up any information. So make sure that you have the correct VIN that, before you send it to me. And... Uh, there again, thanks again for watching. Take the time to like and subscribe. Share with a friend if you know somebody who'd like more information on the new Tundra. And like I said, this truck is available. So if anybody's looking for a 1794 edition with a six and a half foot bed, give me a call, send me a message. Uh, you know, let me know how I can help. Thanks for watching.